I'm not stubborn, I'm right. <laughs> Alright, story, it's- I'm sorry, it's like a 2 out of 10. Like, the story was like... The visuals and the music are doing all the heavy lifting in the story. If it didn't have that, like, this is like a... Like, dog shit story. Like, I can't believe how bad the story is. Like, this is just a Come on, Sunday. it is that bad. It is that bad. Like, I, I'm not kidding, I'm not exaggerating, this is this is 10 year old writing, and I know that for sure because I wrote when I was 10 years old. This is 10 year old writing. The way that there's just constant coincidences and like, oh, they arrived at the city and then and it just so happens that that's the night that Dion stages his rebellion and like, just all this shit, you know, like, and that's just one example out of like, pretty much every single beat the story has. It's just like, oh, it just so happens that when they come back to fix the ship, that's when the gates bust down and the Yakashik come through the gates and also Slepnir's there again. And like, just, just every single story beat pretty much had that. Um, the characters don't make decisions that make any amount of sense. They're not engaged in the story. They're not exploring their options. They're not thinking, they're not talking. They're not, they're, they're just nothing. They're just vessels to move the plot forward be, th th with this like idea of like school school kids LARPing on, on the playground or someone who's 10 years old that's writing what they, what they like from comic books and just writing it and not realizing the mistakes they're making. This story was absolute dog shit. Better or worse story than Ragnarok? Not, it's not even close how much worse this was than Ragnarok's story. Ragnarok's story was disappointing, don't get me wrong. Huge letdown at the end, okay? And the pacing was a bit all over the place. I didn't like the Marvel shit. There's some characters I really didn't like in Ragnarok. But there, there's like no contest. No contest. Like fucking like Ragnarok is so much better than the story. Dear God, this was bad. I can't even say that it had good characters because it didn't. It was like Dion was good, but he didn't have enough screen time. Sid was pretty good, but like he was a fucking moron. The, there was no good villain, and any villain that could have been good was killed off right when they were about to get interesting. There was no real interplay with any of the characters, including the ones that we have in the party. Jill was just a whole nothing character for the whole thing. There was no chemistry between her, her and Clive. Like, I, I like. Joshua, like, I, I'm sorry to harp on about it, but Joshua, like, like legit stalked his brother who thought he had killed him, and, like, when we find out, like, he doesn't even ask him, hey, like, what the fuck, where have you been, why didn't you try to find me, like, you had so many resources, you could have found me in the army, like, well, like, like, what, what the fuck are you doing, like, they have, they have magical, like, message, like, delivering owls that everyone knows how to use, apparently, and the person who keeps showing up to the fucking mother crystal before it explodes, like, that fucking clown in the Hindenburg picture, is, like, suddenly, like, not a, a known entity, but he, 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 he's Schrodinger's outlaw, at one point he's the most wanted outlaw in all the realms, but also no one knows what he looks like, and he, he can't go through a city without being ambushed by some people, but also he can sneak into any city on, and, and fucking blow a mother crystal, like, like, just sometimes you can sense the iconic forces of another icon nearby and know that they're alive but other times the, the king the most powerful one of all can just fucking sneak up on you in the sky like characters just do whatever they want there's no rules whatsoever the the whole entire plot hinged on sid saying oh, i have an hunch that if we blow up the mother crystals that's gonna that's gonna fucking work meanwhile ultima who was just like sitting in the corner eavesdropping i guess was like yes 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 it's all according to kotaku and like no one ever thinks as the situation gets worse as the story goes goes on maybe this is a bad idea maybe we shouldn't do this and then it turns out that the main bad is like this is what i wanted you to do all along <laughs> like it's just like this is like dog shit writing man like the jukebox scene just sealed the deal for me i i uh, and then and now the glass is shattered and i see it all over the place motherfuckers m s sit fucking clive i almost called him sit clive Loses his whole entire family, his whole entire life, and he's in the army for 13 years, just just living day by day with like no personality, copes or dreams or whatever, apart from hopefully one day finding who killed his brother, who turned out to be him, but also not really. And then in the space of fucking five minutes, finds his long lost sister, forsakes his whole station, kills his squad mates, decides that he's gonna go after him, meets someone who recognizes him for the first time, and that person who recognizes him for the first time just so happens to have his fucking dog from when he was a kid this happens literally in the space of five fucking minutes after the fucking flash forward from the prologue okay five minutes this happens no joke no exaggeration that is five minutes all right 
Who the fuck was the, was the hooded dude at Phoenix Gate? I, I guess it was Inner Him or Ultima trying to speak to him. I don't know. What, how the fuck was Annabelle... How, how the fuck did Annabelle give birth to an Ultima puppet? Was there no pregnancy? Was that a real kid? Was that kid die? Like, he just fucking just turned into, like, magic when he was killed. That didn't come back. Like, there's, there's so, there's so much wrong with this. And, again, I would forgive it. I'm, I'm always, I always say this. I, I am willing to forgive a surprising amount of contrivance and bad plot if it's good. Like, like, if the, if the result is good and exciting. Like, I don't know if it really makes sense how we got up into space and had that fight with Bahamut. But I don't care because it was cool as fuck, alright? Like, it was really cool, whatever. I'm willing to overlook some of that. And my brain is like, yeah, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't needle that a little bit because we might find more wrong with it, okay? Meanwhile, what what did they do when you're like, hey, go back, in, go back to fucking the hideout. Fast travel there when we're trying to ride down the ship to save Jill. Go back to the hideout. Find some notes in, your, in my dad's books that I already went through. Fucking look at a poem riddle. Then go over to the jukebox where the kids just so happened to be fucking with it for the first time since we over, went over there. Oh, they broke it in just the exact same way as we were coming to check it out. That we find the piece that, that fucking Mid needed from Sid right then and there. And then... Quest complete, la di da done. Like, like that was absolute horseshit. But and for what? It was boring as fuck. It, it slowed the whole pacing down. There, it, it was just filler for no reason. B brought the story to a grinding fucking halt. Doesn't even make sense because like we have to fast travel fucking there and back again and waste time. Meanwhile, Jill is getting progressively further and further away. Like, like that, that's the whole game. God, it was shit.